You stand by every word of that video, correct? Yep. Do you know what the kill shot is from here? What's that? Well, I didn't know if you were building towards it. The kill shot question now would be that if you could present, so she's made two statements. One, she said that if she has made a statement that she disagrees with today, she would retract it Wait, regardless of the cost. I can't hear you right now. Did, no, 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 you know what? No, no, I can't. This is like so stupid. This, I'm not sorry because you're hoping you can get a Lauren Southern apology out. Like, it's just, it's the weirdest thing. You're like, can you, Hold is there on. anything Peace you can go think of is to not, Do you think you probably have mm -hmm. some level of responsibility for Christchurch? What? You think, do you think that Lauren, because it's fairly characterizable as a Nazi five years ago? I think that I could I could be very empathetic towards somebody that would believe it. When there was so much irony in- you believe it? You've been confronted by this very question so often that I think it strains credulity to say that you haven't thought about it. True. What's up, buddy? All right, Pisco. It's time to make your case. Are you ready? For what? I, I don't know anything about her history specifically, other than what I've been told. <laughs> oh, no. All right. <laughs> Is it just, it's going to turn win. out like every other discussion with her, right? I don't know. This is your shot, dude. This is the big leagues, okay? Hold on one second. You might be preventing future mass shootings, okay? No. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Are we live? I'm assuming we're live. We are, yes. Good assumption. Okay. <laughs> Great assumption. So there's a... Destiny said that you wanted to, to speak? No, to debate. To debate. Okay, we're debating. Yeah, I I popped in for like five minutes earlier and heard you guys going back and forth about this somebody that should probably do a video disavowing her past and um, that was this know, guy right here, Pisco. That was you. Are you ready? Well, so, no. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just lay out your problem. Yeah. To be honest with you, uh, Lauren, I don't know the particulars of your past, except for what I was exposed to. I think I've seen videos about you with respect to January 6th, where you're discussing with Destiny, um, videos about related topics like that. I think I saw you on a round table with Destiny once, um, where he's like debating an old flame named Brittany or something like that. Um, Queen Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Which was a lot of fun to watch. Um, but my sense is that people on the internet and elsewhere in many different circles feel as though you've been evasive with certain positions that you had in the past with um, they have a perception that that you came back to the internet um, and tried to rebrand yourself and I guess I'm curious whether or not you think that those um, accusations or observations have any merit to them is there has there been a change in your positions or anything like that? It's it's really hard to say anything that has been like a huge change in my positions other than mostly my approach to things. I'm far more critical of the right wing now than I was before I came back because I got burned by so many of them. And I think my inherent assumption that the right wing is always correct was uh, obliterated by that experience. So I'm, I'm far more open-minded, but I'm still absolutely a conservative. I still think there's problems with mass immigration. I still think there's problems with feminism. You know, I, I, I'm not radically changed in any way. And I think anyone who took from my video that I'm suddenly a centrist when I returned, um, didn't listen to the part where I explicitly said, I'm not a centrist. Yeah, I think that's, that's fair. Um, I don't think anyone ought to expect you to radically change your political beliefs if that's not genuine. Um, do you think that there have been any, I don't know, radical positions that you once held that you no longer hold? I don't think my positions were ever as radical as people assume they are or think they are. And I think 99% of the people that criticize me for my past videos and content have not watched my videos. And I can usually tell uh, as much just by speaking to them. Like, I, 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 you were talking about how I should disavow the Great Replacement. I, and people will criticize me and say, oh, Lauren took down her video, so how dare she ask people to um, watch it before criticizing her for it. Well, it's been, you know, uploaded other places. You can find it if you really want to. So, like, I'd have to ask you, have you even watched my Great Replacement video? I have some time ago, okay. but I'm not, uh, to be clear, I, I didn't ask you 
uh, to disavow anything other than. Oh, no, I heard you talking about it earlier. I would just like to interject for the record no that um, I'm not making any statements on anything being said here. I do not necessarily uh, condone anything being said here, nor defend any of the statements from either litigants. Uh, I just want to be clear on that. Okay, continue. Oh, okay, bye. Yeah, <laughs> I, my perception has been that, uh, you know, you, you might, I, I totally accept both your and Destiny's characterization that there are people who have misconstrued your views. But strictly speaking, that wasn't my question. My question was whether or not you have yourself realized a, a difference in position, either on the great replacement or on any other thing in your past um, in terms of your views. Has there been genuine movement um, from what one might characterize as the far right uh, to a more central position? Not whether or not people have seen your video or not, not whether or not people are fairly construing your views, but honestly, do you feel as though you've changed significantly? No, I don't disagree with my great replacement video that I made. I think a lot of it was accurate. I just would present it differently today if I did it again. Why would you present it differently? Um, because I think that you can say factual things and have people interpret them in ways that you don't intend. I just based on imagery, tone, all these different things. So I'd, I'd present the information differently. But um, you stand by every word of that video, correct? Yep. Okay. Um, so it's fair to say that video fairly characterizes your current position. Yep. So really, um, in your own mind, there hasn't been a change between uh, quote unquote 2016 Lauren and current Lauren. No, there's been a lot of change. Just I think that everything I said in that video was accurate. With respect to those views, those were your views and continue to be your views. Uh, in, in respect to that, yeah. Okay. Um, so do you think that Destiny's characterization, um, which has been more or less, you slowly, you've quietly shifted away from those views, but you don't want to prostrate yourself in front of uh, Hold on, excuse me, I would like to correct record. I was saying that if it was the case that somebody had done it, then not necessarily asserting that she has or hasn't. I think she's still like pretty, pretty conservative, but um, just- but, uh, uh, <laughs> Destiny, to be clear, you just heard her say that there's no difference in her position on the Great Replacement from then till now. You accept that now, do you? Uh, this matter is not involving me, okay? This is a conversation between you two, all right? What's but I did issue? hear that. What's, what's, your, what's your big issue with um, the way that I presented that video? Like, what were your biggest uh, qualms with it? I think implied in that video, from what I recall, is a normative position uh, this is my substantive position on, on those theories and those views, which, um, strictly speaking, isn't what I came to talk to Destiny about. What I came to talk to Destiny about was the use of apologies and why apologies might be useful for people, even when they're not going to be received immediately in the right way. But to answer your question, um, why I think I would have a problem with that video and why many people do is underlying it is a normative oh, fear I love Israel. that Israel. white people are going away or that um, there ought to be white solidarity or racial solidarity. And those are kind of views, I think, which I reject so wait, think are ultimately. So this is like when you say um, you feel in the video that it, it yeah. stirs up a fear that white people need to unite or white people are going to go away or whatever. Um, uh, so was there any like specific statements I made? Because I think the idea that white people are going to go away uh, is, is something that is not just spread by anyone who talks about the great replacement, quote unquote, mm -hmm. but is constantly in the mainstream media. It's constantly, you know, uh, Europeans are becoming a minority. It's is talked about in The Guardian and The Telegraph, the Spectator. You can look at any left wing, right wing articles. It'll all say the exact same thing. You there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here now. I don't know if I was cutting out. I, oh, you stopped. No. We didn't hear your response. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Repeat you, you, for were the... saying that, um, you were saying that 
it's a view that's been expressed elsewhere, not just uniquely in that video or indeed in the rest of your repertoire. Yeah, and I don't think that you would consider it, like, is it inherently negative to suggest that white people are going to disappear? Is that a bad or a wrong thing to talk about? I don't think it is if every single group of, every single political faction is saying the exact same thing. I would be careful not to say that every political faction is saying the exact same thing, but I would agree with you that that your views and um, that video or indeed that theory is not the only source of um, white angst or fear of of replacement of white people. Um, but I, I do think that that particular view is one that I find absolutely um, reprehensible, not necessarily people who express that which, view. Which view? Which view? That white people the notion are... That white needs to be protected. The notion okay. that um, it, you've, I'm sure you've seen Destiny's video where he dissects, I think, very incisively why the notion of even a white person or, or a quote unquote white people is a, I think, tenuous concept if it has any substance at all. Um, when he brings, uh, if you see, well, that is the case, I would be, uh, <laughs> I don't want that submitted at this time. There's a lot going on there, okay? You don't think that that's a representation of your view with Nick Fuentes when you said, you know, define what a white person is and, and you went through that tie diatribe and um, showed him the, the... I think that <laughs> if I was having a modern day discussion on that, I would stand by every word that I say there, but then I would turn to the people nodding smugly to my left and say, you guys are just as bad, if not worse, grouping together people of color. The Democratic Party is learning this hardcore over the last couple election cycles. That's fair. And, sure. and, I, and I hope you don't mistake me mm -hmm. for saying that. Yeah, sure. I just I would want to be clear that like I'll make fun of like dipshit white nationalists who talk about white all the day, you know, and they talk about like it being European. Even though if you go to Europe, they don't see fucking white people. There's like 35 different ethnic shades of like what a white person is. Whereas like people on my stream will look at like people from the Middle East and be like, that person's white. I, I know because it's <laughs> and it's like okay, dude. Uh, but then yeah. I would also look at lefties who are like, oh yeah, like all brown people or like even black people have the same experience in the United States. I just got an email from like a 35 year old black woman like yesterday who was super pissed off. She's like, bro. Every time you talk to black people in your stream, it's always fucking black immigrants. These people are not nothing like the normal black person you as like. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, these are things. I would just be clear that this happens on both sides. People paint very, very broadly when they talk about ethnic groups. But OK, go ahead. Um, I, I, I just I want to I want to ask a question here just based on uh, your your answer there about, um, you know, the white white. Actually, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Do you would you agree that uh, w with the kind of consensus that white birth rates right now in a lot of places are not meeting replacement levels for their country or their national, you know, re replacement birth. I would agree with that. Rates. Okay. So let's say it, it were the same for indigenous groups in Canada, uh, America, and there were a bunch of articles in the media coming out saying indigenous people are disappearing and that's a good thing. Do you think it would be weird or strange for those indigenous people to have the reaction to say, <laughs> hey, we don't really like this. <laughs> to, to be clear, I didn't say it's a good thing that quote unquote white people, however it's defined or if it's self-identity, this is the reason those stats are the way they are. Um, you wouldn't catch me saying it's a good thing that um, that cohort is decreasing, um, nor would I likewise say that it's a good thing if the, the same were true of indigenous cultures. But if your question is, is, is there parity in my views with respect to native cultures, minority populations, and and white populations, I think the answer um, in substance and underlying it is yes, there is parity. There's a, a wrinkle here, which is the kind of people uh, generally, and I'm not saying this is you, and you can't speak for everybody on the right, and I would not hold you to all the positions of the people on the right, but the kinds of people who are agitating um, white um, angst and fear of, of white birth rates, there's an association between those views and um, policy solutions policy solutions and attitudes towards minorities, which I also find reprehensible. And so, it, although it, you're correct, it's not a necessary conclusion that anyone who talks about white birth rates has those views, you can yeah. understand why someone might react just as a human being, perhaps a little differently when white people are talking about their birth rates as opposed to right. indigenous folk. So this is why when I tell you that, um, you know, the, the only real difference between what I would do today is how I would approach it, what language I would use, what imagery I would use, is because I would not want anyone to have any sort of reaction of hate towards other people. I would not want anyone to have any sort of reaction of, um, 
oh, I should become a white supremacist now by talking about these issues. And I think more than ever right now, talking about things like, quote unquote, the Great Replacement, which, by the way, started without any sort of conspiratorial side of this is Jews doing this or anything. That was all added on to it by 4chan. That was all added on to it um, by people who took and twisted Renaud Camus' original theory. I think mm -hmm. talking about this issue in an honest and open way, and even if you're coming at it from a left-wing perspective of, hey, you know what? White people are disappearing, and this is why uh, there, there shouldn't be some angst or fear about it, uh, like approaching it with kind of love and understanding or approaching it from a right-wing, hey, you know, the, this birthright thing is real, and here's uh, solutions if you do feel you want your culture, uh, your background, whatever, preserved. Here, here are solutions that are nonviolent. Here are solutions that are non you know, extremist. I think I'd agree with the general assessment by a lot of leftists today and certainly destiny that if you don't give people real solutions to problems you present and they are catastrophic civilizational problems, that that can be a form of stochastic terrorism and that you give them no other option than violence. You give them no other option than chaos and terrorism. So I think the language I would use and the approach I would use would be very different. But I think this problem is more crucial than ever today to talk about so that we don't have, you know, people approaching it with this hopelessness, people approaching it thinking, oh, the only people who are going to talk about white birth rates are going to be people that are banned on the internet or banned from society. And um, journalists on the left that are celebrating it in the mainstream media. I think there needs to be like a safe middle ground there to have that conversation. Do you believe that there is a deliberate strategy on behalf of people in power to maintain low white birth rates? No. Um, do you think that that's a view that you expressed in your 26 whenever video? Uh, if I did, I don't remember it. And you'd have to point it out genuinely. I'd, I'd have to go rewatch the video myself, but I don't recall saying that. No. If that was a belief that was either explicitly said or um, fairly understood from your video, um, you would now disavow that belief without any objection and, you know, without any hesitation, you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't hold back a change in position, would you, out of fear of retaliation? You want to tell the truth to the people and what your actual views are. And if you have a change of position, you want to let us know, right? Yeah, I don't disavow things, but I would, if I did say that, I would disagree and I would correct that and tell people, no, that is, that is incorrect. So you think that that's not a yeah, deliberate plan. So do you think that Destiny's assessment that you're hey, worried about- Hey, just say about, an assessment, okay? Or, don't hear say my opinion, motherfucker. you think okay. that an assessment that um, you're merely sh um, hiding your views out of a grift or because of um, built up anger towards the left, that's not true, right? We're getting your unadulterated views and you're not hiding from anything to save face or to make money, right? I mean, if I uh, wanted to make a ton of money, I would have come back with a massive video just saying how all lefties should die, right? That would have been my comeback video, not, hey, I kind of want to look at both sides, guys, and lose 200,000 subscribers. <laughs> there you go. So anyone who said <laughs> that you're just, you know, you're, you're cringing away from, and, and from the left because you don't want to get bullied more, and anyone who's saying that you're just in it so that you're, you're not on the street as a beggar, that that person would be totally detached. Hold on, wait, hold on one second. Um, Lauren, on your uh, Discord, do you see an option in the bottom left that has two that has a headphone thing? <laughs> what? There's a headphone thing. It's like a yeah. microphone thing. Can you click the headphone thing for like one minute, real quick? Okay. Okay. Peace. <laughs> click that again. Okay. Click that again. Hold on. No, no. Hey, absolutely hold not. On. Peace go. Look, hold on. Look at me right in the eyes, okay? Listen, I'm saying, okay, I haven't had an in-depth conversation with her about her fucking great relationship. I'm just saying that hypothetically, this is how I could see somebody be there, okay? She might believe whatever the fuck or have a whole bunch of things. I don't know. I'm just providing like one potential explanation for people. And then that's what I'm giving examples of like people like Hunter that have tried these things and they haven't worked. That's all I'm saying, okay? But given that what? you're now being confronted with um, a person who has said that they're honest about their views and they're not going to lie and they're not going to grift, um, that theory must be thrown out unless you think she's lying right now, correct? Um, true. If you want to, if you're trying, if you want a harder position, so like the kill shot question. Or wait, hold on. Do you know what the kill shot is from here? What's that? Well, I didn't know if you were building towards it. The kill shot question now would be that if you could present, so she's made two statements. One, she said that if she has made a statement that she disagrees with today, she would retract it 
Wait, regardless of the cost. I can't hear you right now. <laughs> just hold on, okay? She would retract it, irrelevant of the cost, right? We agree with that essentially, right? Because she cited, well, I came I back. I yeah. paying it right now. Yeah. And so I that's the one. Right. And number two, she says she doesn't specifically remember the word seventh grade replacement video. So the kill shot question is, if you could present her with a line that pretty explicitly says there is a directed replacement of white an people, an intention, yeah. directed intentional replacement of white people, she necessarily would have to retract that. And if she found a way right. to squirm around that, then there would be some weaseling or misdirection or some bad faith act on her part. Unfortunately, I don't have the bullet prepared because <sighs> I, I was going to bed and you you called me, you called the banners. Yeah. Well, here's you know. the thing, no one ever does. No one ever seems I to. That, Lauren. And, and, <laughs> Lauren, I don't believe, you know, uh, oh, no. I think that there's He's good in everybody. It, guys. Um, I'm sure we disagree on substance. Uh, on a great many things. Um, and to be honest, do I memorize the words that you put in your great replacement video? No, I don't. I don't, I don't even know where I- Yeah, you I, just remember that you have to be mad about it. Like everyone on Reddit, like everyone on Twitter, everyone just knows they have to be really, really mad about it and call me a terrorist. That seems to be uh, the general consensus. I, I can't speak for other people. Um, I can speak for myself and, and I, can, I can say that I, even the, the version that you gave just now, where you were saying for right-wing people, isn't there a legitimate fear that all, should be spoken about honestly? You know, even that version of the Great Replacement, uh, worrying about culture and that's more, I, I guess, neutered form, is something I would condemn in the strongest possible terms. And so I don't need, uh, I don't need to know the specific line for line. Wait, wait, what would you um, condemn in the strongest possible terms? The notion the that people should be or right to be in fear of their quote unquote culture going away um, to the extent that that's, you know, white culture or that their birth rates are lowering. I, I, people do not have a right I, to a static culture or a static set of birth rates or to see everyone, in, you know, one in one particular fashion. The, the world changes and we can do things and enact policies, which I'm sure you're in great. Uh, um, I, I think that's I think that's fine to have as an opinion. Like you don't think people should fear their culture going away, but you're going to have to convince most of the world to think that too, right? Like you have to provide a convincing argument for that because culture, yeah. community, history, background, language, these things are very, very important to our identity. Like extremely important, whether you're white or any other background, it doesn't really matter, you know? Absolutely. These are I'm essential human, to the, the message the human experience. Without question, history, tradition, myth, story, all these things loom large in our societies. Um, I would not advocate for us to like burn the Bible or burn um, his, his, history and tradition. You know, I, I work in law and so half of the stuff we're doing is citing precedent. And so I don't think that wholesale erasure of history is something that um, ought to be encouraged. And I can understand people who say, you know, the world is changing. And I'm certainly my message wouldn't be get over it to those people if I was trying to enact, you know, smart policy. But if I'm talking honestly with people, as I think I ought to be when I'm having public discourse, the answer would be, I think that that fear is illegitimate and should not be catered to. Um, and we should find ways to and, and not be serviced by changing immigration policy to be or, or anything like that um, to capitulate to this ultimately illegitimate fear. Um, so th that's kind of my, my stated position in public policy if I'm having public policy discussions. Um, but I don't need to know, memorize every word in that video to understand the essence of what that video was about. And I think that you would agree with that. Um, fair? That are upset about the Uyghur genocide like that's sorry, just a cultural I'm sorry, I'm sorry. like there's been a lot of cultural genocides in history well, such as like the genocide of the sorry can you hear me I, I i it was cutting out can you start over from the beginning when i yeah stopped? yeah so i don't I'm, i just want to clarify i don't think this is what is happening i, I shouldn't even be using the term white people because a lot of people are correctly pointing in the chat pointing out in the chat what the hell is white culture european culture more specifically um but what would you say to like a deliberate cultural genocide of the indigenous Canadians or the Uyghur people where their culture is literally being erased by a government? Should they just not be upset about that? Now, to clarify, I don't think that's what's happening to European people. But if it were, should they just, you know, whatever, it's just your culture? I think deliberate attempts to, to in, in terms of an intentional and malicious 
attempt to wipe out history or to change what birth rates are, um, if the, it is intentional and malicious, that is problematic. It's problematic. But why? But why? Like if culture doesn't matter at all, like why is it a problem? If if, if the government decides, you know what, culture we think this matters. is really helpful. Well, let's, let's be clear about a couple of things. One is culture matters. Uh, okay. What we were talking about were, were, were birth rates um, and to the extent that they're connected to culture, you know, I, I'm not sure. I can't possibly speak on, on the way that well, quote, culture of, is. Of course. Yeah, and actually linked with, with culture, but culture is not static. That's and uh, culture not sh should be, I think, more universal than merely race tied or you know the racial component of culture should should not be emphasized. That's my perspective, sure. and I think att attempts to to link race and, and culture or to emphasize race as um, a an important factor in one's identity an important factor in one's society, I think ultimately leads to inner conflict and disarray. Um, and so that's my, why I think that, but deliberate attempts, intentional attempts to wipe out particular races or particular subsets of cultures uh, is problematic for a couple of reasons. Um, wait, yeah, wait, 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 sorry, you made the claim that race and culture should not be tied. And you know, in, in America and, and Canada, in a lot of cases, I think I can agree with you there. But do you not see that there is there being like some ethno cultures in the world? Are there ethno cultures? Um, like, let's just say, like, you know, if you're if you're Jewish, your ethnicity tends not always, of course, but there there are some like ethno cultural ties there in a lot of cases. Undoubtedly, there are correlations and and, and links between and obvious links between one's race and ethnicity and their culture by virtue of your birth and where you're going to be and where the tendencies are for any particular race or ethnicity. A hundred percent agreed on that. The question is, should we emphasize, should race be an important factor or an important consideration or something that's driving policy? Uh, it, and in a way that we, you know, we're trying to protect and cultivate um, one particular segment, especially, you know, a, a majority segment, which has outsized influence in that society, or you know, at least in the United I States. Love I, Israel. I, love um, Israel. I think that that view is, is very problematic. And it's oh also problematic God, on the other side, Lauren, I won't deny it to you. I think a lot of the policies um, from the perspective of the left have not done well to engender support on the other side. You've seen disastrous attempts at like, I don't know, social justice policing from the left, which have ostracized and pushed away um, the white people and, and the right wing. And so I think down this road leads, leads trouble. And I think that your video, to the extent that, you know, I remember its theme, plays into the fears of race and emphasizes race as, as something important with respect to birth rates and with respect to culture. Fair? I think that I think that race and culture are connected, not entirely. Um, and I don't think that that should be the ultimate emphasis or the focus of a country. I think assimilation and making sure people that do immigrate to countries have time to assimilate and become a part of that culture and country is, is more important than ensuring, oh, you are 100%, you know, the same race as this country, of course. Um, but I think it's completely reasonable for people to point out when immigration rates are to a degree that assimilation cannot happen. And when the birth rates of the native population are low enough that eventually that uh, seesaw is going to turn one way instead of the other. I mean, I, the left have a word for this when they talk about gentrification, white people going into neighborhoods and turning it into this white area. And they get pissed off about that with, with white culture, quote unquote. And I don't think in any other country you know, outside of Europe or outside of the Western world, anyone would be okay with the idea of, say, tons of Europeans moving into Pakistan and just kind of <laughs> taking over and, you know, killing out the local culture there and having their birth rates decline suddenly until their cultures eventually die out. I, and this is always talked about with, uh, I know obviously Destiny has a very different position on this. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's very consistent when he says, uh, don't the, quote me i am here I no, no 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 I, you've always been consistent when people jump up and down about preservation of indigenous cultures in america and canada and there the inconsistencies there sometimes um whereas i actually would say we should do more to preserve uh indigenous cultures in canada and america 
since I, I find those things important and I find those communities important. So that's like the biggest disagreement. It's not actually like some big disagreement over, oh, I want, like, it's not some big, I want to save the white race thing. It's not really about that. It's that I find community and I find cultures important and that is tied somewhat to birth rates and that's absolutely tied to immigration. Yeah, if whites became a minority in the United States, would that be a problem? If whites became a minority in the US? Yes. I don't know, we haven't got there yet. <laughs> like, I, I, know, I, know, I have no we idea. We haven't got there yet, but would you characterize it as problematic if America became, if whites in America were a minority in America? I mean, the only the only problem I could see there is like if it happened in like such a time span that assimilation couldn't occur, you know? Yeah. Um, do you find it at all convincing when people bring up that um, the, the kind of arguments you're deploying were similarly deployed in the 19th century um, with respect to Chinese immigration and then Irish immigration? You know, copy and paste these arguments about assimilation. Um, they were the basis of the Chinese exclusion laws um, as well. I'm sure you've heard these arguments before. What is your response that, you know, we've seen this this song before, it didn't turn out that way, the Chinese exclusion laws, it didn't turn out that way with the Irish or the Italians. Why should we fear Mexicans? Well, I think saying uh, we're going to put a head tax on you specifically because you're Chinese is a, a head tax. A, head tax. A, a, a Chinese exclusion law, which, which made um, Chinese individuals, first of all, um, have to jump through significant hoops if they even were allowed to come to the, in, into the country. Um, they were excluded from the country. And if they were already in the country, they need to have papers attested to by white people. Um, they oh, were I, think that's, I think that's absurd. Of course, I think that's absurd. What I what I appreciate is looking at, you know, Sweden. <laughs> I know everyone gets triggered when I bring up Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, but their their prime minister was just talking about how they've unfortunately created two parallel societies uh, within their country of one of migrants who haven't quite assimilated yet and one of the local Swedish people. So now they've introduced very reasonable laws that have language requirements so that you don't get enclaves within the society that cannot communicate with each other. They've included cultural understanding requirements. Mm -hmm. These are extremely reasonable policies that I think should be talked about more and probably stuff I would have talked about uh, if I were to redo my video today. My question though, uh, you know, totally respect that you bring that up. That's um, it's worth knowing. And maybe it would be useful to, to talk about those policies. But my question was the boy who cried wolf. You know, we've heard these arguments deployed in the 18th century, the 19th century, and in the 20th century with respect to all sorts of different ways of immigration and the fear that white people were being um, pushed out. Fuck me, and hold on, can I just fucking say something real quick? I'm getting fucking triggered, real quick, okay? Hold on, okay, because I see a lot of people saying this, that like people are talking about whether there's an intrinsic link between race and culture, making it sound like this cringe, okay? For a while, people were saying that there shouldn't be an intrinsic link between race and culture, but that, that oh my Jesus. Okay, that like people on the left make these arguments all the time now, guys. Like the cultural appropriation arguments are all saying that culture is necessarily and intrinsically tied to race. When we talk about like who's allowed to say the N word, we're talking intrinsically about tying parts of culture to race. When we were talking about preserving like certain cultures, we were almost like, like the left always approaches this from like an essentialist racialized position. I, like to pretend that it's not that case, you guys are fucking delusional. You, dis to think you disavow that, you disavow that, don't you? <clears throat> yeah, I do, but the issue is always yeah. that it looks, it's impossible for you to defend your side. It's it's like, if I go on Twitter and I'm like, fuck white people, fuck mayos, fuck these guys, white genocide. It's like, so yes, 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 yes. And if I'm ever like, okay, well, fuck black people, holy shit, now we have a huge problem. That's indefensible to anybody on the center or anybody on the right. You look like a fucking lunatic. That's the issue. That you can in one breath say things like, it's actually immoral for white people to wear Chinese dresses. And then in the next breath be like, oh, I don't think white people should care if they become a minority. Like, that's not important. What do you mean it's not important? Like, I don't expect Lauren to take on the baggage of the right. I, I don't expect Lauren. Yeah, but you're expecting me to take on the baggage of all of history. I feel like if I were to debating you on uh, minimum wage or something, you'd be like, you know, bringing up slavery in the past. Like, mm -hmm. it, I, it, you're bringing up policies, past policies that I obviously don't support, that I obviously haven't espoused. It's like, you're just trying to vaguely link me to all of these far I'm worse concepts than everything that I've brought up. Then, you know, I, I think it would probably be more helpful to discuss the well, issues you have with my ideas than, than yeah. issues that you can link to 
try to link to me by six degrees of I'm not trying to you to wait hold on wait I want to hold on Jesus I need to shit on Lauren thank you thank God she said something so fucking dumb okay Lauren it's not six degrees of separation when you literally do sit down interviews with fucking Stefan Molyneux that's like one degree of separation well, well, okay? well, he's bringing up like historical Chinese exclusion laws what does that have to do with Stefan Molyneux I'm 99% sure that Stefan Molyneux is literally done like verbatim like white person replacement under like direction from elites and shit like on his YouTube shit of the past like, okay, I find you talk to me all the time so now do you have all of my views like do no I, do you have to that makes me hold on that makes me two degrees separated thank you okay oh, continue okay okay i'm happy to explain why i brought that up and and um i wasn't trying to tar you with the the, the guilt over the chinese exclusion laws and these old supreme court cases um i was merely trying to say that the the spirit that animated those laws was just as concerned about white birth and, and culture and crowding out of white people. And they were just because right? someone did something with the same concerns in a stupid way doesn't make the present I argument. That, I understand that, you, that it is not a necessary conclusion that you would support anything approaching the Chinese exclusion laws in the United States or any kind of the, the discrimination laws with respect to Irish people or, or Italian people or the practices indeed that, that occurred there. But my question wasn't defend those policies. My question was, we've seen this song and dance before. We've seen this game before. Not the policy itself. No, 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 you know what? No, no, I can't. This is like so stupid. This is like if I were to say concerns about workers' rights led to gulags. We've seen this song and dance before. This is communism. Look at all of these people organizing. They're, they're having unions. We've seen this before, all of these communist countries, all of the dead bodies piled up everywhere. Like, no, it's not the same thing. Suggesting that you should have language laws and suggesting that you should have some cultural expectation from people moving to your country is not the same as saying that we need to treat non-white people as subhuman and not allow them into our countries. Those are two very different arguments. I again that I'm not trying to connect you to any specific- Yes, you are. No, I'm not. No, I, I'm trying to, what's animating those policies before I see as the same thing that's animating. It doesn't matter whatever. if you see them as just animating the same thing. The gulags and the workers' rights was animating the same thing. But my argument is different, and I like it. You want me to explain? Am I, lo Steven, am I losing it? Am I like crazy here? I'd like to finish explaining what I was talking about. If that's okay with you. Yeah, let him finish. Stop cutting him off. Go ahead. Oh. Please go resume. You're just terrified of agreeing with me on anything. You're like, please that's give not me true. something to disagree with. Lauren. Oh my god. In fact, I, in fact, that I, I, I granted you that the left can be extremely problematic with respect to their identitarianism. I granted to you that I'm, I'm willing to say that you do not espouse the same beliefs as the most radical fringe on the right. I, I granted that uh, a great number of things. I, I'm, I'm taking you at your word that you're honest, that you would share your, your true and forthright beliefs. And so I, I don't have a problem with agreeing with you in principle, except to the extent that I genuinely disagree with you. And my intent here isn't to tar you with the Chinese exclusion laws. Uh, if you want, like me to explain why I brought it up, um, basically, the f what I'm trying to get at is it seems like in the past when these arguments were brought up by natives, the fears were overblown. The Chinese did not overcome, you know, the white race in the United States. The Irish did not have a problem with assimilation after a couple generations. Um, there's a vibrant community of Asians in in the West now. Um, there's, you know, vibrant communities of of Hispanics. Uh, all over the country. And so, can where I, is oh, Jesus, I hate my life. Okay. <clears throat> can I say that there might be a slight difference? Um, okay. My mom was born in Cuba. I think she came over when she was four or five. Okay. Very proud of her, right? When my mom came over, if you were to ask my mom, like, Stephen, or Mary, sorry, like, how do we integrate, uh, you know, immigrants? What my mom would say, and she she would say this today, if she still remembers, is she would say, you throw them in English schools, you don't speak a lick of their native language to them in public, and you expect them to assimilate and learn everything about the United States. And I think she learned English in like one year. She And she said that like any Spanish kid, anybody that came over from Cuba, I think it was the same with one of her siblings, because I don't know if Robbie was born yet, um, like learn the same way. You bring them over, throw them into an English school, and they'll learn the language. And then they'll, uh, my mom's brother, sorry. Um, uh, so that would be like my mom's approach. And I think back then, I think there was that expectation that like, if you're Irish, Italian, whatever, when you come over, like, 
even though they had ghettos and even though they had their own communities, like you were expected to kind of like integrate into the United States and pr perform whatever you needed to to be like part of society. I think it's it feels a little different today when there's kind of like this cultural obsession with preservation and respect for other cultures. Like it felt very much like in the past when I, my very poor reading and understanding of US history, and I could be wrong, but it felt very much like we thrived on this concept of a melting pot. That there were lots of people that came over, we throw them all together, we smash them together in these cities and we get like Americans at the end of it. But now it seems like we're far more culturally aware and even making a statement like that seems like very controversial. Like if I were to make the statement, I think if I were to make the statement in like the 50s or 60s that like everybody that comes to the United States should learn how to speak English. I don't know if that would be that controversial. Um, I feel like if I said that today, I think people would call me racist or a fascist, almost certainly in the United States. You think that's right? What's right? You think that having a, uh, a mandatory language is racist? I don't think so. It's one of the few things I think that we should have. I think that like, yeah, absolutely. I think we should have a, a state a nationwide language. Yeah. Please go. Do you think it's racist to have a no. language that people have to learn before they come to your country? I, I think it's odd when people suggest things like banning certain languages in schools or taking issue with like Spanish translations being under signs and stuff like that, or get mad when other people are like speaking a different language in public. Those kinds of things are attitudes that I think are, are wrong. But, sure, but sure, but yeah, do you think there should be a national a universal language? language expected as as like, when people migrate. I don't think that it's a problem at all to expect people to, to speak a common language where they're gonna go. Should we mandate it with like criminal penalties? I would be in disagreement with that. No, 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 but should we mandate it with, through like the migration process? Like you have to do a test, an English test before you no, come to Canada. No, I disagree with that policy. Really? Yeah. So you there think people other, should be able to move here with no ability to that's correct to communicate with other people in the country, probably no ability to get a fucking job, probably okay, no yeah. ability to go to school, even a if, lot of you know, there. a lot of assumptions there. So you, we yeah? ask as a condition of getting a, a visa in this country, whether that's permanent residency or some kind of non-immigrant visa, you're asking me whether I think that there should be a literacy requirement with respect to English. Is that is that what you're asking me? Yes. The answer is no. Uh, our, our petition for wait, for the hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me hold on. Let me steal in a little bit more. I don't think she's necessarily, or maybe she is, not a literacy requirement, but at least like a language comprehension requirement. Language yeah. comprehension, yeah. yeah. So maybe uh, you don't no. have to learn to write. Well, but okay, gotcha. Okay, move on. The answer is no. And our immigration policy for the longest time has mm -hmm. not um, recognized uh, a unilateral need for quote unquote. Um, cultural competency or indeed ability to economically thrive. We have separate visa categories for different reasons. For those who are wanting to uh, obtain gainful employment, we, we leave it to the employers to decide what are the- I'm talking about people permanently, trying to get permanent residence. Well, there are employer-based permanent visas for, for living here as well, um, as, as well as family-based petitions. And the family-based petitions aren't based on quote unquote, uh, cultural competency or quote unquote economic viability, they're based on blood familial relationships. That's been the purpose, or it's, an, a, you know, uh, to the extent that an English requirement wouldn't make sense in the, in the category of asylum, where the United There's States like, government has signed up to international agreements recognizing- Yeah, the asylum need status is obviously very- Wait, wait, okay, also I wanna like break out, like I always argue with uh, <coughs> racist conservatives about this. Uh, we would recognize there's a distinction between like legal immigrants, illegal immigrants, and asylum seekers. These are gonna be like three totally separate categories and our treatment would be totally separate, right, Pisco? What do you mean? I mean, uh, like asylum if we like asylum seekers are things that like, we don't take on asylum seekers because we think that they're like beneficial to the country or they're gonna help our economy. We do that as like a moral oblig, what we see as a moral obligation to the planet, right? So having them jump through hoops feels a lot weirder than like a legal immigrant, I would say, right? It, it would definitely feel weirder for, for asylees, but yeah. what was, was provided with me was uh, the question of, you know, general visas. Um, if you want to exclude asylees, asyle that's fine. I don't think like, there should be. It, it's not a. I figured that was common sense, man. I figured it was common sense that when people are escaping, they don't need to do a language test. <laughs> yeah, like if there's legitimately, like if we're talking like Syria, like the country is being destroyed. Lauren, stop laughing, you rude bitch. Okay? If we were talking, or rude person, sorry. If we were talking like a, like a Syria is being destroyed and we're trying to resettle from Syria and their country is getting fucked and we're like, okay, you can resettle in the US. Like we're going to help you. Can you speak English fluently? Oh no, get the fuck out. That's like pretty shitty, right? So I think, but versus like, somebody at the border is like, oh, I want to immigrate to the United States to work. It's like, okay, well, can you even speak the language? No. I started my whole diatribe mm -hmm. talking about employment-based visas, mm -hmm. um, some of which are permanent visas. Sure. Then I got into family visas, and then only finally as an afterthought mm -hmm. to show you uh, why, a, you know, a total 
English requirement doesn't make sense as a final afterthought included asylees. And I'm sorry that it was so ridiculous to be comprehensive that, you know, I get laughed at, but, you know, deal with the other ones. Okay, we, yeah, sure. So let's just talk about like people like moving here to like work or like- We, we yeah. endow our employers. They're the ones who are competent to make decisions about what is and what's not uh, for better or worse. We th we think the private actors are the ones who get to decide what what is useful for their for their businesses. Maybe English requirements are not a needed skill for some. Well, hold on. Can, okay, let me. So let me push back on this from like a legalish perspective, right? Um, I don't think that you would appeal to the ultimate nature of an employer to make these decisions when it comes to matters of like protected classes, right? So, for instance, let's say I choose to not hire somebody because they're black. We wouldn't say that. Well, in this case, employers. No, I, no but I, what I have a problem with is, is interfering with. Um, the most, I would, I think you guys agree that the most competent actors to decide who is a valuable employees are the employers. Fair? No. Uh, no. Well, so like, so here, so here's like the issue. Okay. Um, okay. I'll start with a very, very, very quick personal story. Okay. So when I was, um, I, I, I feel like. I feel like people, given the opportunity to be around other people, can integrate in unbelievable ways. That if you stick like the most different motherfuckers on the planet next to each other, eventually they're gonna learn to like each other and get along. There's only one exception to that, and that is if you cannot communicate. So like, um, I remember being in Auckland for, it must've been like Chinese New Year shit or whatever, in New Zealand, and it was, more, I don't want to misquote her, maybe I was in like the wrong section, but like, I don't even remember it being like in Chinatowns in America being like this, but walking through the streets and that was going on was a very strange experience to me because like everything was in Chinese. The people were speaking Chinese and I didn't have any fucking idea what was going on. And personally, I don't give a fuck because I don't care about anything, but I could see somebody like living around here and be like, this is like a very alienating experience. And no amount of goodwill and no amount of like being like charitable or trying your hardest to talk is gonna help because there's a language gap and you can never bridge it. You're you're actually cut off from that completely. And when you talk about like, well, employers are able to make decisions that are good for the country. Employers make decisions that are good economically. It might be the case, and again, I'm gonna go back to the race thing. It might be the case that discriminating against black people in some areas is actually beneficial to business. And that might create like a feedback loop where black people are pushed out, more discrimination happens, and then it actually ends up being beneficial in that case for them to discriminate. It could be the same thing with language, right? Maybe in a certain area, there's a lot of Hispanic people. So you start hiring only Spanish workers, makes it harder for non-Spanish speakers to go to these restaurants. And then eventually you kind of like build out, you carve out these spaces for only Spanish speaking people. And then it's like, well, fuck, we're fracturing society based on language, which no amount of goodwill can overcome. I can get along with anybody on this fucking planet. I truly believe that. But if they don't speak the same language as me, like I'm just going to nod and smile and we're going to walk away. Do you understand people. me mm -hmm. to say that we should defer to employers for all and regulations? No, of course what? not. Are you an no. ANCAP? Of no, course not. not. Okay, sorry. Of course not, no. Government's role is to intervene when, when private actors, especially um, employers and, and other economic actors, um, where there's collective action problems and um, where they're doing naughty things that have negative social externalities. I, I'm, I should not be meant to, to be understood that I'm against regulation, but in this particular case, so many people learn the language, guess what? By living in a place, by working in a place. And they so, don't do right. it if they can move to an enclave where everyone speaks the same language as them, though, because that's integration is happening at a rate that assimilation cannot occur. That, that's your assumption. And uh, it's what's not more my assumption. We're witnessing it. And leaders of countries that aren't even remotely right wing, like the leader of Sweden right now, I guess she's kind of centrist is what I'm being told. She said that that's exactly what is happening there. That's she what can they're say witnessing. It once. I mean, it's, it's a short. Oh, I guess it's, she's just lying. Well, do you think that she is omniscient? And that she can speak for you know, they're witnessing it there. all enclaves. I mean, uh, you think that their observations are the word of God? I, I you know what? You're right. I guess uh, you know more than. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let's hold on. Just as somebody that's lived in California and has spent some time in Texas and has spent a decent amount of time in Florida um, and in neighborhoods and God forsaken Miami, Pisco, there are places in the United States where if you only spoke English you might have a really hard time getting through like parts of the town. Like you probably couldn't go to restaurants or maybe you could, if you could like point to menus and pictures, um, you'd have a hard time communicating like with barbers. Um, you, I'm thinking of like literally personal experiences uh, where like a guy had to go and grab his like six year old out of the car to like translate when I was trying to get a haircut. Like th mm -hmm. these are places that happen. This happens in like in the United States, right? Where like the language barrier has actually like been a problem. We don't, we don't make policies based on your interaction with the barber or on the growing pains in terms of like short term. Um, wait, 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 hold on. But this is something that we could control with policy though, okay. right? Like if there was ever a case to make policy, why not here? We make policy for the long run. And what are the long term benefits in a country that's not just facing declining birth rates in the whites, declining birth rates overall. 
in a country that wants to remain competitive. Right, but you can you can still have, there are a lot of people that already speak your language that have probably put in applications to come to your country. There are a lot of people waiting on applications to go through it. We, in Canada, I'd say we're probably taking too many people in right now. I know uh, we're, we're building less homes in Canada than uh, immigrants were taking in annually, so we're, we're having problems there. But I, I, I think that you can accept immigration to combat birth rate issues while still having some standards. I don't think that's crazy. Well, here your assumption is that I assume that there are birth rate issues and that these are something that need to be solved. That's the you just you you agreed to, you just said that though. What do you mean? What do you think? I Wait, hold on. We have to when we say birth rate issues, are we acknowledging that there's a disproportionate birth rate among race or that it's a bad thing? Right. That's what we're talking birth about. Rate. Yeah, yeah. You just birth said. Respect, sorry, birth rate with respect to overall yeah. economic actors and and uh, having yeah. a backbone for our um, obligations with respect to like pensions and stuff. Yeah, that's yes. that's what. I'm yes. Um, okay. Totally agreed. I mean that there's economic angst with respect to especially fiscal problems uh, potentially down the line. If we don't have a sufficient worker base, all the more reason to increase the number of um, immigrants in this country and increase. Okay, sure, fine, fine, but can we have? Should we have standards? Some, any? Of course, there should be some standards. <laughs> can we? Is it? Do you think it's reasonable to say language is probably a good one? That's I, I mean, in, in a world in which we have. Uh, do you do you agree that there can be enclaves created of people that don't speak? Yes, I agree. native language of a okay. So you agree with that? Do you think that's a problem? In the short term, it can cause some uncomfort, but not in the long term. No, I don't agree. I don't agree with so that. So in the long term, if areas that uh, <laughs> two believe, different areas in a country that speak different languages never well, cause problems, say like, fear mongering. I, I think that English. You think, is, you think that uh, yeah. we didn't have um, an entire province try to secede from our country in Canada? Because they speak a well, different language and because we have so many different cultural um, disputes. I'm pretty sure there's another their history with, with Quebec that, that isn't present for the several states. I'm speaking about America. Sure, but the biggest difference between us is that we speak different languages. There wasn't a, a different government in, in charge of Quebec and in that province for a significant amount of time. I'm not sure. I don't know the history of Quebec. I thought the that. biggest difference between us is that we speak different languages and it's called I suck issues. at history. My understanding is that like one of the reasons why Canada like was able to work is that like one of the big things that they literally have two state mandated languages for like French and English. Like I think Canadian kids like take like fucking 20 years of French and they have it and like on all their government shit. I think is all printed in both French and English. Anyway, like, but yeah, this is all, I, I, that's actually a very mild example like, of, of language issue. Um, we can disagree. We can we can totally disagree on 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 policy, on substantive policy and immigration policy. You might think that language requirement is um, is something that makes sense. Um, I wouldn't say that that's inherently a, a racial position that you think that English should be spoken because I think that it's okay for for states to encourage English to to be the main language. The point of this discussion was whether or not your positions on race and its effects on society and whether or not it should be promoted as a as a source of legitimate concern, whether you've taken any step back from that. Um, and Do you want I, me to take steps back from things that you can't even necessarily define? Like what, the, what about look, race do you want me to step back from or do you think I should or have? I'm asking you from your own perspective whether or not there's anything with respect to race that you've noticed that you've changed on. I. I can't speak for all your internal thoughts, but really put yourself to the test and, and, and think, is there any attitude that I had or any thought that I had in that period that now I've ultimately concluded is wrong? Before you said no with respect to your great replacement video, but think more broadly than that. Is there any yeah, attitude? I did, a, I did a video uh, giving a speech at the European Union uh, called Changing My Mind on Immigration. And it, it's got all of my opinion changes that I've had on the issue. And most of the thing is like a lot of it, a lot of my solutions for these issues haven't changed, but my perception of them and the problem has. So I think that's like, I, I, I don't want to say, ooh, I've changed to a bunch of people and then say, yeah, I still think we need to limit immigration because that's probably all that matters to, to people. It probably doesn't matter so much to them that I have a lot of sympathy for uh, the experiences that immigrants go through, it probably doesn't matter so much to them that I, I have a lot of sympathy for, you know, the, the crisis that a lot of refugees and illegals go through. And I, I truly do. I truly do. And I know, for a, I know for a fact that I've seen more of the journey and lives of illegal migrants, refugees and the like than most of the people that I debate. I've been there on the ground with them. I've 
been in the caravans coming up to the US. I've been with migrants before they take off in boats to Europe. And I have a lot of sympathy, but um, especially because of that sympathy, a lot of my uh, solutions haven't changed. You, you don't think that that's an important thing to spell out for people in terms of if before what was motivating your concern was racial solidarity and that's the reason that, that was not that was not what was motivating my concern yeah. and i absolutely have spelled this out for people just no one watches my fucking videos i said if so you don't think that racial solidarity is a major component in any of your work um i, I would definitely say that uh one thing that motivated me to be right wing when i was younger was being told by my teachers and professors all the time that i'm privileged because i'm white when i grew up in a poor working class family that absolutely motivated me and i don't know if you would call that racial solidarity so much as being pissed off that my race is being demonized but um no it was never an idea that white people are better and therefore we need to prevent these like filthy brown people from entering. And if it ever appeared that way, that's because I was an absolute moron with how I presented things. Absolute idiot. And I would absolutely change the way that I presented things um, in a lot of videos that I made. You think, you think the races are equal, that there's no inherent uh, superiority to any of the races, correct? I don't think there's an inherent superiority. Okay. Between um, any race, no. And I mean, that's oh, that's sorry. great to hear. I just let it go off. Yeah. And, <laughs> <What? I> mean, <laughs> And you've always thought that, right? You've always maintained that the races are um, the same in substance. This, what do you mean by that? There's no inherent superiority. You've always that's always been your position that there's no inherent superiority of white people. I know. I don't think there's an inherent superiority of white people. That's no. always been your position, correct? Yes, that's always been my position. Okay. Um, in which case, it sounds like you know you haven't changed any of your beliefs. Sure, dude. You, like. You've like, I don't know why it matters to you, and I don't know why it matters to a lot of people. Like, if you don't like my beliefs now, I'm not sure why liking my beliefs five years ago would matter to you. Like, just hate me. It's fine. I don't care. I, I don't want to hate, you know, and I, I I think that you shouldn't apologize for things if, if you're not sorry or if you don't think that your beliefs are objectionable. You shouldn't apologize. Um, but I think it's in, important for you to, to clear the air. Um, so now everyone knows, you know, that you haven't changed. Uh, in terms of your substantive position. I mean, you, you may have changed in the way of how you marketed yourself and how you stated your position, but everything remains as it was. Um, and I think that's an, important to get out. Um, and everything does not remain as it was at all, at all. I'm very, very, very different than I was before, but in ways that uh, is probably not gonna matter so much to the lefty people purity testing me in ways that really matters to me and in ways that probably really matters to the people that listen to me and I truly believe is doing better for the world, but the people purity testing me don't give a shit about that. You don't think it would matter to me or to Destiny? Maybe Destiny, but no one else, no. I don't think they'd give a fuck. Lauren, I'm crying on stream right now waiting for your I, disavowal video. It hasn't happened I, yet. I, I care <laughs> about, you know, to, even if your policies haven't changed, the rationale behind those policies makes all the difference. You know, if if I kill someone in self-defense, you know, versus me killing someone in in malice, the result is the same. You know, you shoot the person, but it makes all the difference in the world your intentions and what's motivating them. And so, if you've had any substantive change that you think that has affected your supporters and would affect Destiny if you knew about it. I think there, there are people out there um, who will have an open mind, not on Twitter, but why not give them a chance? Because they aren't mad about my motivations. They're mad that I dislike um, illegal immigration. They're mad that I dislike mass migration. They're mad that I'm generally conservative and they'll never forgive me for any of those things. So even if I apologize for things that they may think are marginally worse, they'll still hate me. It doesn't matter. But. If you truly, you wouldn't apologize for something you didn't feel, correct? We both agree on that because you're not going to no. lie. Um, but there's nothing at all you would apologize for, honestly. Well, well, well like, there's no, I, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I just, fuck, I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, one argument is I won't apologize because they're not going to accept it. Another one is, I'm not gonna apologize because I'm not sorry, which is what you just said. You don't even know what you want me to apologize for. You're literally just fishing because you're hoping you can get a Lauren Southern apology out. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's the weirdest thing. You're like, can you, hold is on. there anything Pisco you can think of to apologize not, for? Hold on, Pisco is my resident good faith actor, except when he's talking about terrorism. Okay, so he would not do that, okay? 
just being clear. Yeah, okay. Well, like, I, I don't even know what he wants me to apologize for. He's just like, just really think, Lauren, really think. What I'm, I'm really not in, I'm trying to get to Destiny, really, which is Destiny has for months. Hold on, been, whoa, you don't even know what my position is on this, bro. Fuck you, what are you trying to get to me? Bro. Bro, you know what? You know what? Fuck it. I'd shoot all those flares again. I'd sink all those Stop. ships. Don't do I'd this. do it all I don't need again. These threads. I'd I... make all my videos. Absolutely. And I'd take you with me, Destiny. You're going to come shoot the flares with me. It's going to be great. Peace go. You can not. come too. I've got extra <laughs> flare guns for you all. Okay, hold on. Let me sharpen. So let me. Many no. Fucking ships together. I'm going to sharpen Peace Go's Damn. blade here. Okay? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, no. Hold Destiny. on. Hold on. What? You can go. I, I, but I have something to say to you. Say it. Just say it. For months, uh -huh. the story has been from you that the reason why we haven't had a movement from Lauren that's visible or you know th that she hasn't articulated um, a change in position is because you know screw those lefties for demanding it. They're not going to accept her. No, anymore. no, no. Hold on. To be clear, I mean, to you. No, hold she, on. You know, chill. Twice. Just, 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 I've given a ton of hypotheticals. I don't know her one reason. There might be a variety of things. However. One of those things that I did say to you, I believe earlier today, one of those things I did say to you, remember when I said there is a broad list of accusations, but a pretty narrow set of things that she might change and giving any sort of apology seems like an admission to guilt for the broad range of charges. That seems to be like fairly close in line with her saying like, well, it's I believe everything I did. Do, right? if, if, you, if there's something that you did wrong that you would do again, the right thing to do, even if it's, you know, tangential or minor, uh, not if it's de minimis, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to apologize for farting on stream if you farted on stream or, or something like that. But if there's something that, you know, significant enough for someone to say, there are substantial changes that my audience would understand and maybe Destiny would understand. That sounds like there are actually some things that, that um, Lauren would change about what she did in the past. If those things exist, isn't it the right thing to do to say what those things are? Yeah, but the issue is that there's a lot going on. When you say, for instance, so... Okay, so this is, I don't know if you know where the public conversation, I don't know if you read Reddit threads or whatever the fuck. When you say something like, oh, so your position hasn't changed at all, what do you think most people in my community hear when you say that? And then she says that. That. What does she still believe? The rationale and the substance behind the ultimate underlying so what, whether that's a political position or an outlook or an attitude, that those things are largely stable. And no, I think that, but the, but the beliefs that they're hearing reaffirmed are that she believes that white people are spirit of black people, that there is a concocted effort by she Jewish. She denies she ever believed that. She what? denies she ever believed that. Yeah, she but no, she, but yeah, but most people think she well, will say that she did, or that she's lying now about that. Do you think she ever did? Um, in terms of like some weird anti-Semitic shit, I my it, I think it would be hard to believe that she was around all those people and didn't pick up a little bit of that. I don't know if she ever put that expressly in a video, but like I, my assumption would be that she probably thought that there was some weird Jewish shit going on. That would be my assumption. I don't know if she would admit that now or not, but I mean that that's a conflict right now. I mean, both of you guys, I, I are, are friends, and I'm not, I'm not trying like to cause a rift, but like how don't you want to know? I mean, you, what you're just saying is that you think that Lauren has just lied. In terms of what, I don't know, so one, I don't know how much honesty I would expect on a live stream, just as on that, number one. Number two, would I want to know what somebody believed a long time ago? Well, I'll say a long time ago, four or five years ago. Um, Wait, no, you, you just said that Lauren yeah. just lied. Wait, I don't, hold on. Okay, let's be, <laughs> let's be clear. Lauren, did you ever, now, yeah, earlier, how we, can you do this? we were talking about the content of our video. Lauren, did you ever you believe in some weird Jewish shit? Maybe there might've been some Jewish people running shit, maybe at some point that you didn't put in a video? No. Really, never, not a single time? I read about it, of course, but I never All that, really hold on, was that. there any part of you that wondered like, man, you know, there really are a lot of Jewish bankers, a lot of Jewish dudes in US media. You'd never, you talked to a lot of these people that believe this stuff, like you'd never in it, any part of your life, like, you know, maybe, maybe there's a little thing to like this. The, there, Jewish... there's, the only thing I was, fuck, like, Okay, I there you go. Okay, that's that all I need. Thing. Okay, no, okay. No, I'm... okay. <laughs> Shit. No, like the only thing I would say to that is probably like what, what leftists would agree with anyways, is that there's a lot of power in like the Zionist lobby. Mm -hmm. Sure, for sure. Well, okay, like, there you go. Fuck, yeah, that's you know, all I, I need to hear. I mean, that's, clo like, that's close enough for me. Those are people, Jews controlling the world now. Okay. Sure. But now my guess would be, I'm not trying to walk you to this because because <laughs> Pisco is a simple in this conversation, okay? My guess would be is that you would probably see those financial structures a little bit less tied to Jewish people today and more just like a lot of people have, or a few people have a lot of money that are in like, 
in, um, invested in like guiding the political conversation in some way. And these people like some like a lot of them happen to be Jewish, but it's not like sure, dude. I'm gonna okay. grab some more wine. I'll Fuck you. OK, well, there I tried. No, I'm serious. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, go get wine. wine. Drink. Yeah, keep drinking. Good job. Thoughts, Destiny? OK, here's the here's the the important question, OK, because on one hand, I, I think that you're wait wait, 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 I'm back. The answer is no, you're not going to find any uh, Paul Joseph Watson style videos of me or recordings. <laughs> we'll like see. That. OK, no. hey, you don't know <laughs> what I've got, <laughs> what people sent to me. OK, um, OK, oh, yeah? here, so here's the important question. OK, so you said that you might change some of the approach, but you wouldn't change any of the like a actual ideas or whatever, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I did a point by point analysis of this with counterpoints before mm -hmm. I all these people are like, Lauren, if you just did a point by point analysis of your great replacement video, then people would be OK with you. And it's like, well, I did that. And then, you know, no one cared. Um, OK, ready? That's going to be a hard. Was... No, this is the hard question. OK, I need you to hold on. OK, I need you to grab mm -hmm. a towel. OK, because you might be feeling pretty slippery after this question. OK, OK. Do you think that there is that you probably <laughs> this is such a. This is such a mean question. I'm sorry. Do you think you probably mm -hmm. have some level of responsibility for Christchurch? That that guy, no. you don't think that any no. of the stuff you said could have bled down into any other people that reverberated or resonated that, with like the same types of messaging? That's like totally- nope, Not even a little bit, not even a tiny bit. I have these people tweet me shit all the time that's like, oh, I bet you can barely sleep seeing dead bodies in your dreams. And I'm like, dude, I sleep just fine. Like I don't, I, I know I'm not responsible for that at fucking all. The guy had decided to commit the massacre four months before I even came out with the video, there's zero responsibility I have for that attack. None, zero. Is that true, Pisco? Bring up the logs. Well, I I honestly don't know. You know I, I, I You're gonna get Reddit threads on you, Pisco. You better bring them up. The, the reason I talked to you, to Destiny, was about the abstract of why, if someone were to feel apologetic or if someone did feel guilty for anything, that it would make sense, notwithstanding the short-term pain, to express yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. There's the that's not really our conversation. The con the real conversation that we were kind of like dancing around, that we were earlier is like when I hold people, when I hold other people to the same set of standards that I hold myself to. And I think the answer to that is largely no. But so I think that's kind of where some of our like weird like dancing was, right? But it, it sounds doesn't it like mm -hmm. Lauren's saying it, right? And I, you've known her longer than I have. This is the first time meeting you, Lauren. You know, mm -hmm. nice to meet you. Pleasure. But, but everything you're saying, Destiny, sounds like you're doubting her. It sounds doubting. Like wait, 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 hold on, wait. Doubting which part? Skeptical. And wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, wait. Doubting which part? Doubting her refutation of any link to Christchurch, which I can't speak to. Okay, I can't I, speak to that because now I don't know the fact of the matter. If you really just start planning it four months beforehand, or she's lying about that, I don't actually know that fact of the matter. <laughs> um, if it was the case that the guy had written up all of those plans before her video even released, well, then that would be, I would be an idiot to try to accuse her of being like wildly influential there because then obviously the plans were already written up. I, but I don't know factually if that's the case or not, so I can't say anything. Okay. Um, in which case, like, that, Lauren might feel totally satisfied with her public position now. Um, and I think that it would be good for her Frankly, in the long, I can't speak for you, Lauren. I, I don't know your life, um, and so I guess I shouldn't say this. But I think that there are open-minded people out there, and if you ever want to reveal the substantial changes that you uh, you sort of offhandedly referenced um, in your life that that your viewers would understand, that maybe Destiny would understand, I think it would be worth sharing what those things are at some point. Um, yeah, dude, I, I actually agree, really agree with you on this one. I'm um, I've already filmed a few videos on this, and I'm I'm redoing them because I'm filming out a uh, or filming, sorry, flying out a friend to assist. But I'm doing a big series on a lot of the more substantial changes that have happened in my political journey, a lot of my stories, and a lot of criticisms I have of the right wing as well. And I've never really talked about it. It's hard to talk about. It's. Um, it's it's hard to talk about the negative experiences you had with a political group that you put so much faith in and genuinely believed in and genuinely thought was you know fighting the good fight or whatever. Uh, so this is this is going to be my little my little manifesto on the right wing. Um, yeah, but I'm working on that, man. Okay, Pisco. So I'm curious for you. Okay. 
I'm not holding water or running defense for anybody. Everybody kill yourself. Okay. So if she said that she's done a video with Connor points going point by point or whatever, if like there, if nobody has any, oh, but you haven't seen that video, so I guess we don't know if no, you no. think that it's satisfactory or not. I, I'm not sure. You know, um, what I'm taking on on good faith that Lauren says she doesn't have any racial animus, that her concern is merely with um, assimilation, that she has no animus towards Jews. She says it, um, and. Right now, I you know I, I can't provide the logs to dispute her because I I didn't come to talk to you, Destiny, about the particulars of Lauren Southern. I I did the only thing I've done substantial on Lauren Southern is disagreeing on January six when she when she talked to you and I um and I didn't like the way she characterized it. But um basically, I think that if there's any change that you see, like substantial change that you would have from a time in your life where at least many people characterize you as an extremist, you would agree with that at least. Maybe not that you were an extremist, but that many people characterize you that way. I think the right thing to do, both personally so that you don't have any hangups and so that people know the real story is to reveal that. Um, I, Plan on I don't, it. Yeah, I've got, I I've got big plans, man, big plans. And don't worry, FBI, not those kind of plans, the good kind. <laughs> <laughs> the okay kind, the not dangerous kind. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and I guess on the, on the substance of the related issues, I, you know, I couldn't disagree more, uh, with Lauren's perspective, but do I think that there's that by virtue of one in an English requirement in immigration policy, you automatically become a racist? No, I don't. Do I think that by wanting to restrict immigration more that you're necessarily a racist? No, I don't. Um, I think the majority of people who were angry at Lauren were seeing racism and maybe it wasn't there. But Destiny seems skeptical <laughs> about that. Wait, no, and no, no, wait, hold on. Jesus fucking Christ, okay? I don't think she's racist now, but five years ago, I don't know, maybe, it's hard to say. I, 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 I don't exist in her mind and I couldn't, but that would be the assumption that I would make. If I go back now. and I look at like the totality of like who she was hanging around and the videos that she made, I would assume she was, or at least a little bit. Like that, like anytime people wave around like the Western value, civic nationalism, like any of this type of shit, I just assume like, oh yeah, this person's probably a little bit racist. That like culture is intrinsically tied to a people's skin color and shit like that. And then the, based on the videos that she made, the French braids, like, yeah, I mean, I would, I would assume that there's like at least a tinge of racism here, of course. But like today, no, I don't think would so. Or if it is, she hides it really well, right? Would you call her videos racist? Um... I might make the distinction because you have to be so fine about it. If not racist themselves, like empowering racists. Lauren, do you think Destiny is a reasonable person? <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I do think it's a reasonable person. So, do you think a reasonable person thought that your videos were promoting racism? Yeah, yeah, and that's been something I've thought about a lot. Um, and I, I think uh, a lot of people, it, it doesn't really matter for the far lefties. Like, if you're someone that's schizo posting about me, this doesn't really matter. For, but for anyone that's kind of more in the center, can consider that, you know, conservatives and right wingers are, are actually human beings, even if you disagree with them. You might be interested in watching the, the last few videos I came out with before I took my break from politics, particularly my speech about changing my thoughts on immigration and my, my last documentary, Borderless. Um, I, I think that would be worthwhile, totally to, fair. Be worthwhile to watch. And, and I think that people have an obligation to, you know, to see your body of work, but um, given that you just said a reasonable person like Destiny um, could have seen your videos as promoting racism, do you think it's that unfair that a large segment of the population thinks you were promoting ra uh, racism? Surely if a reasonable person thinks that you are promoting racism, um, and you, most of the country is not reasonable, and even reasonable people could think you're promoting racism. Why, why do you take issue with um, the general attitude that you are promoting racism, if reasonable people think that you were? This is why I think we need to be really deliberate with how we approach things. This is why I think um, now, in my old age of 26, right? <laughs> I've grown a bit from when I made videos at 19 and 20. Um, I, I think the way that we present things matters, as I said at the beginning of this conversation. So even if we don't have the intention for someone to take something a certain way, uh, we, we have to ensure that we're careful with our presentation. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Destiny, thoughts? Oh, I mean, obviously I agree with that. That's my whole fucking thing, right? So now, Destiny, why can you be mad at your audience if 
you are a reasonable person and you thought those videos were racist or promoting racism, sorry, how can you be butthurt at your audience for wanting a disavowal? I don't, if they want a disavowal, that's fine. I'm, I don't care. I don't care if people hate her. I don't care if people think she's racist. Even if they currently think she's racist or not, or want to disavow, that's fine. What I don't like is people saying that I'm either being a hypocrite or that I would simp for a blonde um, for because I'm not like begging her to like do disavowals, that I'm not like on my knees to be like, please, Lord, if we're going to be friends, you have to disavow, right? Because I have never, ever, ever conducted myself that way with anybody. I am the ultimate person of like, I don't care what you did. Like, let's move past it. Like, I said that Vosh could come back 90 days after his fucking weird, creepy sexual fucking ban. Like, I've never, ever held anybody to the center ever. So my only irritation is my audience claims that I'm being inconsistent with or applying an inconsistent standard. That's what drives me crazy. Now, before you said, and people in your chat said it too, mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to sympathize with people who, you know, if they were to martyr themselves, they would lose all their source of revenue. And, you know, I can't ask people to make that sacrifice. Now I'm asking you to put the, sh you know, you, the sh your shoes in of, of someone else. Sorry, put your feet in other people's shoes. People who maybe are closer affected to the immigration issue uh -huh. or maybe closely related to the racism issue. Maybe they felt racism in the past. Just like you're asking us to sympathize with creators who are gonna lose their revenue stream, can't you sympathize with the individuals who's, for, for these issues, it, it hits close to home. Yeah, and so I, don't, I don't understand why nobody, under, nobody ever, under, why don't everybody sympathize with me, Peace Go? No, um, no listen, like, maybe here's like, this is all, these are, there are so many statements that you could make that I would be a okay with, okay? If you're in my subreddit and you're like, I think Lauren was basically a Nazi five years ago. Eh, sure, that's fair. Or like, I think she's racist now. Okay, you think that's sure. fair? Sure, fuck it, yeah. If people, I think that if people wanna believe that, yeah, considering who she was associated with, who I she did media think, for, what? You think, do you think that Lauren, because it's fairly characterizable as a Nazi five years ago? I think that I could I could be very empathetic towards somebody that would believe it. When there was so much irony in- Did you believe it? Do you believe it? Would I believe it? Uh, a full on Nazi, no. But like, alt-writer, probably. Sure, but like, but when I'm, I'm saying that there are other people that I could believe, or I would empathize with them having those views of her being currently racist or of her being like mask on or whatever, um, and all of that. And there are other views that I accept too. If people are saying that like me being um, associating with her at all is like a negative thing, it's rebuilding her image, it's like making too light of her past. Whatever. If people want to say that, that's fine. I'm okay with all of that. And if people want to say like, I don't want to watch Destiny anymore because of the people he associates with, I'm fine with that. There's so many standards I'm fine with. The only thing that I'm not okay with is when people are saying that I'm applying an inconsistent standard to her versus anybody else. That is absolutely not true. And that is the majority of the criticism on my subreddit. Well, that's one problem. And then another issue I have is when people are trying to say, I think she's racist today because of this. And then they start naming like ultra standard conservative positions. I don't like that. Yeah, that bothers yeah. me. I, I understand that. Sure. Um, so those are like yeah. my two huge issues. I, I do want to drive this, this point home just real quick because uh, we kind of glanced Go over for it. it. Just as you're asking people to be sympathetic to creators like Lauren um, and their revenue streams, although- No! Hold on, I'm sorry, I just have to be so clear. I'm not, I'm not asking anybody to be sympathetic towards anybody. I'm not here to like, like- well, you I'm, are, right? You are sympathetic to it. That's I am, why yes, I am. But I, but if you're like, oh, fuck that, like she's been involved in some crazy fucking shit, like I don't ever wanna like, yeah, sure, fucking dude. That's fine, there's a lot of like radical 19 and 20 year olds that never went sailing on the fucking, you know, coast of Italy looking for immigrants to fucking murder, right? <laughs> uh, like, so like, I'm totally empathetic towards people, like that's oh. way too much for me, like fuck that, I'm out of here. I'm sympathetic towards that. And if people are like, I don't wanna watch your streams, like, yeah, sure, I can empathize with that. I, I totally, I understand it, that's fine. That's okay. What I just don't like is non-factual statements being made. Like I'm applying an inconsistent lens or like somebody is racist because of insert like standard, you know, politically conservative statements here. Those are my two issues, that's it. Okay. I, I think that's helpful. I think that's- It's yeah. not helpful. I've said that a million fucking times. Nobody gives a fuck though. Because the, all the threats, because I was gonna be, thank thank God. No, I was gonna I sleep tonight were, worried were, that there weren't gonna be another 20 Lauren throws in my spread and now I know I can wake up to him. Because everybody's <laughs> gonna say like, Lauren Weasel this argument, she's actually still racist. Here's why, because she quoted the fucking Swedish PM and then like uh, she's crypto mask on ultra about all of her fucking views. She says her views haven't changed and her views used to be like, here's like a fucking quarter. Like that's what all the threads are gonna be about. She used to be a Nazi, really, she's still a Nazi. I'm really excited for them all to say that I'm super slick when I sat here and said, I regret nothing. I changed none of my views. Yes. Lauren. Very in, fucking in, direct with you. In fairness to both of you, I, I just want to be clear. I, I did not uh, initiate this conversation. Um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to have an expose. Wait, to the extent that kind of. You kind of initiated this conversation, but. No, 
You, I, you I, said, I, I want to ambush you, and then you talked to me about it. Well, but, I wanted yeah. to ambush you about the, because the, you have this opinion on, on apologies, mm -hmm. where... Oh, sure. Uh, that, that's what I wanted to get at, and that's why I was, I was shining Which is away. also, by the way, which I'm also empathetic towards. If you think that my opinion on like apologies is like dumb as fuck, I, I'm going to empathize that too. It's a very non-standard opinion. I totally empathize that. But just don't pretend I apply it inconsistently. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, but so you're not, you don't begrudge anyone who has, uh, given that Lauren says that her substantive positions haven't changed in five years, and given that you think that five years ago, uh, people could reasonably see her as a pseudo-Nazi or at least racist, you don't take issue with anyone calling her a pseudo Nazi and racist now, right? Kind of. It's, Why? I mean, if they believe that, because, well, the thing is, is that if they believe that she said things in the past that she didn't actually say, then it's still based on faulty reasoning, right? Which would be a problem. But if they no, thought, for instance, that she was mask on before, or just that her views alone about immigration made her racist, and she still has the same views, and they think, well, she's still racist. Okay, yeah, that's fine, sure. Okay. If that's your standard for like being racist or whatever, I think that's fine that you believe that. I would, I mean, I disagree with the standards, but if that's, if you're applying the lens equally, then sure. Okay, that's fair. Well, that's all I got. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, happy. You, sure? you better think hard about this, okay? <laughs> what else is there, Dest? I mean, I think Lauren has said that there's some things that she would change. They're forthcoming on what those things particularly are. But in substance, her rationale and her views haven't changed, uh, nor her actions. I didn't know if the, the boat thing, that was a meme. I think part of it was a meme, but um, I'm sure there's some truth. Ask her. My, my Grill her about the boats, Pisco. Over 100. <laughs> Ask yeah. her if she would go on the no, boats again. Ask her for real. She memed about it earlier. Yeah, don't let her meme away it. Ask her if she would go on the boats again. Well, would you? My only regret is that I didn't have a higher kill count. Don't let her meme away yeah. from it. She's being slippery, Pisco. Dude, the flare gun I picked was shit. She's memeing, Pisco. Have a fucking it's spine. And I needed backup. Have a fucking well, spine. You? If you Definitely. did, wouldn't wouldn't it be important to communicate that 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 was a mistake? Even if yeah, it was, a dude, mistake. I would have fucking taken a much better weapon. Absolute fucking. Don't let her meme it, Pisco. Flare gun. Lauren, answer dude, the fucking question. How Lauren, many boats stop can you take down Lauren, with a flare gun? You gotta answer the question, Lauren. You gotta answer the fucking me. question. Okay, go drink another glass of wine if you need to. But we're holding that, you to it. Do you think it was a mistake? He said, do I admit that it was a mistake? Yeah, I told him the flare gun was a mistake. I would have taken a Going on the boats. Going on the boats. You don't even know what happened with the boats, man. Like, I'm not having this conversation with you. Okay, Pisco, here's what happened on the boats. They sailed out on a dinghy, and they shot flares around, trying to either turn around another boat or send a message, okay? Was even, it a mistake? You don't even know what happened on the boats. So wait, what did boats, I just say that was guys. wrong? Wait, hold on. What did I just say that was wrong? You don't even, you're like, I think they were trying to turn around a boat. I'm not sure. I mean, like, if you guys did, you would have considered it, like, mission complete, right? Don't tell me that if a boat would have turned around, you'd be like, oh, no, that wasn't our intention at all. Oh, Soy, oh, no. You obviously would have felt a great sense of accomplishment if that actually happened. If I turned around an illegal trafficking boat, for sure. Okay, wait, then hold on. Well, then don't, don't be like, oh, that wasn't our goal, blah, blah. Maybe that wasn't the goal, but if it would have happened, you would have been okay with it. So, yeah, also, I don't think cool. the boat was, was operating illegally at the time. Yeah. Okay, also, was, okay. are you, wait, the Aquarius or whatever? Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. It was an unregistered, illegally operating vessel that, wait, what do you mean? They were not allowed to be doing what they were doing, but they were fucking no, getting away. Assume today. that I know nothing about it, and, and I say, Lauren, you know, I've heard that there was a boat incident. Um, I heard that, you know, you've been maligned. I heard there was a boat incident. I, I heard that you've been maligned, that you didn't, you didn't want to hurt anybody. You've said as much, but do you, you know, not knowing anything about it, I just want to know your take. Do you regret going on the boat? You think that question is unreasonable? Um, honestly, hmm. no, I don't think it would have changed anything. I think all the same people that called me a Nazi and all these names, anyways, would have kept calling me the same shit. I'm not asking what you know, the behavior of yeah, others. I'm saying for you, the boat, the, for your the own boat thing, spirit, the boat for your thing own actually soul. had. The boat thing only had a PR effect. That's the only effect it had on anything in the world. It didn't do anything it, it, realistically. Like I know um, it would be very based and cool to say, oh, I personally stopped all of this illegal. Mic no, like nothing happened. It's just like a PR thing. Asking. And now the only effect on my life is that a bunch of people think I killed a bunch of immigrants. But when I yeah. think about it, I think those people would find a way to say I killed a bunch of immigrants anyways. So it's like a they might well, they zero, might zero well. like positive might, or negative i, I wouldn't they might do that but, but unfortunately i wasn't asking about the consequences what i was asking was whether it was a mistake to participate whether it was a mistake to participate for you for, you, for your own your own conscious your own ideas whether it, in terms of 
You're I'm against I'm against illegal migra migration. I'm against I didn't ask it. if you were against illegal migration. I asked whether the method, the manifestation of your um, antipathy towards immigration was a mistake or not. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to think about that more. Make her think now, Pisco. What's she doing? Well, I think that, you know, you, you've been confronted by this very question so often that I think it strains credulity to say that you haven't thought about it. True. Good point. Thought, I've thought about it a lot. And like I said, it's the whole thing was a net zero either way. It's not really, it didn't, it, it, the only thing it did was um, kind of change perception. And I don't know if I would want to change perception about me. I don't know. That's Wouldn't you okay, wait, it? hold on. Also, we need to ask the consequence here of the action, right? If you were to like, let's say that you were to take aim with a gun, you got really mad one day, you looked outside and you fired a gun into a group of kids and you happen to miss all of them, but you were just so mad, you're like, fuck it, I'm gonna fire a gun, right? And then somebody asks you, like, do you regret doing that? And you're like, well, I didn't hit anybody, so that's okay. I don't think the consequence is what's being appealed to here. I think it was like okay, the idea you know what? Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna admit something. I wouldn't do it today, but part of me just hates the people that criticize me for it, so I just don't wanna say that. Wow, so spite-driven <laughs> politics. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Lauren, I'm gonna hook you up. There's a guy called Vosh V, okay? You guys are gonna get along so well politically. You can do a podcast. What just I'd happened? Literally, I'd literally rather have all of these people hate me. Like, I'd rather have them hate Lauren, me than sit wanna... here and simp for these fucking... Lauren, I, I took you on good faith that, that you weren't going to do this kind of thing. You weren't going to be engaged in a virtue signal or occulting any responsibility or mistake that you might have had. And what you've just told me is that the reason why you haven't admitted it before is because you don't want to give the satisfaction to the left is precisely what Destiny said, that you rejected. I mean, it's well, before. I think it was, so earlier the art, wait, I'm not simping, go, Lauren. <laughs> wait, no, what were you saying? <laughs> So Hold on, wait, I, I was combining the two things that I said earlier was that it's not just one thing. It's a combination of things. No, exactly. Yeah, it is a combination. But of the, things. one of those it's combination of things like, is like if there's no negative outcome, plus if there's no positive outcome to recanting today and you're going to give the satisfaction to a bunch of fucking losers. She and denied that right. rationale. She said under no circumstances would I do that. I, oh, I would that tell is true. You. True. What other spite driven lack of disavowals are in there, Lauren? There's no shot. I'm not making any any disavowals. Uh, everyone who hates me in your schizo posts and Reddit, I hope you know I am. I wish I shot more flares. I hate you too. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna drink some wine and consider my next trip out to the Mediterranean, where I'm gonna do absolutely nothing wrong. FBI. <laughs> I'm gonna sit there and write poetry. We have the live Lauren can on stream right now, guys. I saved this city. Syria. Okay, um, anyway, um, what else, guys? I think that, um, that clearly you guys have, like, uh, I like your guys' streams together at times. I think that you guys have, like, a good rapport, and I think that you guys both have a lot that you can learn from each other. <laughs> not like, <laughs> no, okay, I'm not... I'm not shipping you or I'm not doing anything like that. All I'm saying is I think that there would be a lot more, a lot less issues with your community um, and that in the long term, things would be better for you. There'd be reasonable people who would, could sympathize with you, Lauren, if there was more upfrontness with certain things. I'm not going to specify on what those things are at the, at, at the moment, but for, this is an example of one that, that just occurred. And I think that there are more open-minded people out there than you think, and we're all cynics, and you all are all going to call me coper, coping. And certainly, people on Twitter are never going to give you the benefit of the doubt, Lauren. But there are reasonable people out there, um, and I think you're boxing yourself in by by just with having such hate for the left and not wanting to give them an inch. Um, maybe in the short um, term, you benefit from it. Maybe in the short, I'm not going to deny. In the short term, you benefit from them. And in, in the to be to be fair, I hate the right too. So yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but, but I think you're boxing yourself in, and I think that there's more to your story, and you don't have to um, hold on to positions out of spite um, and to deny any change if there is change. That's all I would say to you, and um, I hope it was an interesting conversation at the least. Oh, yeah, no, it was, it was nice talking to you. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just so used to 
No, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry for anything. I'm so used to uh, talking to people that just haven't watched any of my videos, haven't engaged with the content, wanting to get apologies from me. And I can never tell. Maybe maybe you are good faith. Actually, you do seem like a nice dude. I, I actually enjoy talking to you, even if we have some major disagreements. Um, but I can never tell who's doing it to try to get a Lauren scalp or who's doing it because they're genuinely curious. And obviously on a stream, that is, uh, it's always going to skew more towards, oh, they just want a Lauren scalp. Yeah. Especially when it's like so non-specific, like just give me an apology. And I'm not saying that that's what you were doing, but of course yeah, that's going to be like my was, initial instinct. No, yeah, I, I totally understand that. And to be clear and to say it equivocally, um, from my perspective, I think that um, I'm aligning with Destiny in terms of what I thought your your positioning was early on. I think there has been somewhat of a change. Um, and I don't think that you're, this is going to sound super patronizing and super, it's not intended that way. Um, but Make just to show that you way. that, do it. I think you are redeemable. <laughs> and I, think you, I, I don't I, want your redemption. I don't want anyone's redemption. That's why I'd rather have these people hate me. Everyone who talks to me like I'm a retarded child that needs to like sit, get on my knees and beg for forgiveness. I want them all to hate me. I don't. You don't, I, no, you I, don't, don't I don't actually. I, I don't actually want that. But I. No, okay. You don't need you know to humble yourself. You, you don't need to to beg forgiveness. You don't need to do anything like that. In my opinion, again, I I don't know your life. I can't speak for you know what what is the the best thing. But I think standing up and admitting fault is one of the hardest things to do, especially when you if you feel you have been unfairly characterized. It, it would be even harder to stand up and admit um, significant but not substantial ways in which you would change things. But I think that it's the right thing to do if there if that exists in your own mind. Um, and I think that there like, are you know people what? who respect you for it. Tell you what, man, we'll, we'll have a conversation after I do. I'm doing this, uh, it's all gonna come out in June, this uh, little manifesto I'm working on. Um, I think you, you seem pretty open-minded, even though we've got a lot of disagreements. I think you'll appreciate the videos I'm working on, but I don't expect a lot of the people who schizo post about me to appreciate them. They'll probably just find some interesting, uh, interesting bits they can clip to attack the right and not really think deeper about how the criticisms I'm making can apply to both sides, sadly. But um, yeah, yeah, watch them and maybe we'll do another live stream late June. Wow. When is your next documentary coming out? <laughs> next week, I think. Wow. Yeah, next week. Do you think that maybe, I don't want to condescend you or give you life advice, but do you think that maybe you're probably not a good person to make things called manifestos? <laughs> Stop. Okay. I'm just saying that, like, for branding you're, and you're the, uh <laughs> You're the white male writing manifesto right now. Okay, okay, true. Also, okay, hold on. I swear to God, okay? I know this is going to seem really bad faith. I'm not trying to, like, attack you personally or anything, okay? I'm sending a clip to you and Pisco. Okay, these are like the things when you say things like this, I just don't know, like, in, in past videos. Um, I think this comes out of one of the, um, I think this is on your personal channel, not the Rebel Media one. Here, I'm sending you this link. Uh-oh. I love what is this? I hate you so much, holy shit. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm done. All right, thanks for the conversation, guys. It's been a good stream. Are we all good? We're all done? Yeah, we're all good. Uh, nice talking to you guys. Yep. Okay. Yeah, great chatting. Have fun. Good night, guys.